Hello, my name is Mark Bartek. I'm the Senior Director for Mission Partner Development. Welcome to the Day of Mission, Prayer, and Giving. Super grateful to all of our supporters for their involvement in our mission through supporting Focus as a Mission or Individual Missionaries. Really grateful to have you. Excited to have a little bit of time today to talk to Tyler Dagan, the Director of Alumni Mobilization within Focus, which is one of our key pillars in our Run So As To Win campaign as well as just a key initiative that we desire to invest in deeply to ensure that those who have been involved with us as students or missionaries continue to receive the support and the encouragement that they need in order to live their faith and to be effective disciple makers beyond the campus. Excited to have you with me today, Tyler. Tyler, would you mind sharing just a little bit about who you are and some of the work that you're doing and maybe how the Lord called you to serve in this area of mission? Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to be here, Mark. Thanks for having me. Um, so I've been uh, with Focus about 12 years now. I originally joined staff uh, after encountering missionaries at Colorado State University. And it was really there through the influence of missionaries that, that they showed me how to, um, well, I would say they really cemented my faith and showed me how to live uh, authentic Catholic faith in the college atmosphere and that that could be done. Um, so I'm really grateful for those missionaries uh, who encountered me in college. And then from there, um, I joined Focus Staff. And, and it was really through prayer. I had an opportunity to be an, uh, accept an engineering job. And also Focus had offered me a position as a missionary. It was really through prayer, uh, specifically the passage of the call of Levi, the tax collector. And when Jesus says, come follow me, I really uh, knew that he was speaking to me. Uh, in the sense of becoming a missionary. And so in my life, um, the Lord has really worked uh, oftentimes in just opening up doors and asking me to to walk through them. And so in the same capacity, you know, fast forward uh, 12 years or so, um, the door was open to serve our alumni in this capacity as the director of the, uh, of the alumni team. And maybe in a more subtle, but still as, as convincing way, the Lord spoke to me in prayer and just, yeah, invited me to, to say yes to this particular way of, of serving the church through the service of all of our former missionary staff and students that are involved with Focus. I'm sure in some ways being called to this is kind of an exciting extension of some of the work you've done previous because you've been a regional director and a missionary and team director before that. So just to see that kind of come to fruition and then to see how are the investments that you've been making in this area of mission translating into, uh, let's just say with air quotes, the real world beyond campus, right? Um, yeah. How have you seen some of that work of being a missionary team director and regional director translate into what you're bringing into the alumni leadership role that you have now? Absolutely. Um, so one thing to note that I didn't mention was I've actually lived as an alumni for a couple of years. Actually, after I joined staff, I left Focus for two years and worked as an engineer and then came back to staff. So I have some experience of actually living as an alumni in the real world, as you say. Um, so that has been helpful, just connecting with our former students and former missionaries who are working, you know, typical, typical jobs outside the church, if you will, and speaking to them and translating my own experience of trying to live uh, as a Catholic, as a faithful Catholic and living mission, even amidst, you know, all that life throws at you. So that has been particularly helpful. Also, it's been really cool, uh, just students and staff that I've worked with uh, during my time in Focus who are now alumni, you know, now I get to transition and continue to work with them in, in many capacities. And there's relationships there that I've built over the years that I continue to continue to build and invest in, uh, which is really quite, uh, quite a blessing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's really cool to think about that, that uh, you accompany them in this particular capacity at this stage in their life, and now you get to accompany them in the next as well. So uh, thank you for doing that, and thank you for your yes to serve students and missionaries and now our alumni in this capacity as well. Tyler, tell me a little bit about what is the Focus Alumni Effort, and why is it important to the work that we're doing within the mission to know Christ Jesus and fulfill the Great Commission. Absolutely. Um, so I really would, I would share the uh, analogy of the Road to Emmaus scripture. Um, 
The two missionaries, as, as everybody probably is familiar with, are on the road to Emmaus after Jesus is crucified, and there's been rumors that he rose from the dead. But they're confused, they're uh, downtrodden, and scriptures say they're sad even. And then Jesus encounters them on the road, walks with them, he opens their mind to the scripture, and then eventually he's revealed to them in the, in the breaking of the bread. And then through this experience, they decide to turn around, they pull an about face, Instead of going to Emmaus, they turn back and they go to Jerusalem and they join the other 11, the 11 disciples and the other disciples as well. And from there, they really go out and tell the world and, and share the gospel. Um, and so in many ways, our, I see our alumni effort uh, in a similar vein. Um, not only our alumni, but probably anybody who's trying to, to live their faith in our current culture. You're going you're gonna to encounter periods of transition, periods of difficulty, periods of confusion, how am, I, how am I supposed to live out my faith in this particular particular environment or culture or whatever it may be? And the alumni team is really hopefully trying to help our alumni re-encounter the Lord, um, encourage them to be saturated in Scripture, open their minds to Scripture, obviously reminding them of the importance of being rooted in the sacraments. And through those things, hopefully they'll be re-encountering the Lord or they'll be reminded of those things that they already know that they experienced as either students or staff with focus. Uh, kind of the, that training and that experience as Catholic evangelists will be reignited and reinflamed in their hearts. And hopefully they'll turn back, if you will, uh, towards Jerusalem, whether that be, you know, turn away from sin that they're wrestling with or just turning towards uh, being more mission oriented. Um, and so that's really the hope of our team is that we can uh, be conduits of that, help them reencounter the Lord, help them be reminded of all those things that they lived out um, either as a student or as a as a missionary, and yeah, respond to the Holy Spirit and where they're calling them to live their mission now. That I, I'm curious, Tyler, uh, when you say that the way that they were living, what if? they were involved, but they were not living in that way? What if they were just kind of on the periphery or maybe they attended a few Bible studies? Like, is there a place for them within the alumni effort as well? Is there still kind of that opportunity for them to deepen their faith and kind of come to know our Lord at the very beginning? Or is this really like sign up to do and to lead? No, absolutely. I mean, we we definitely serve uh, anywhere from, you know, encountering the Lord maybe for the first time, even if you hadn't as part of folks focus previously to those who are striving to live missionary discipleship right now. And so, yeah, we try to certainly serve the whole spectrum, if you will. Um, we go around the country and gather our alumni, uh, different in-person events, and our hope is to represent the gospel to them. So whether whether you're on this side of the spectrum or this side, we always need to uh, recommit our lives to the Lord on a daily basis. And so uh, part of our efforts is offering that opportunity to our alumni um, when we gather with them. We hope that we can also build them up in their faith, uh, no matter where they might be at in their faith. Um, we do that in many different ways, lots of different resources. We obviously, we're inviting them to come to our conference, a Seek, every year to also be built up in the faith. And then those who are desirous of going on mission and really understanding how to do that, again, there's a full spectrum of that, of uh, maybe you've had victories in that. Maybe it's been really difficult. We want to walk alongside of them uh, in living mission, you know, in their parish and in their communities, wherever they've landed. That's awesome. And I'm assuming you're seeing people responding. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have a job, right? What are some of the things or the ways that you're seeing alumni respond to the, the work that you're doing, the resources you're offering, the fellowship that you're providing for our alumni? Absolutely, yeah. So we've gotten quite a bit of feedback from our alumni. Um, some some in person events we've done recently, you know, comments as like, "Thank you so much. I haven't prayed like that since I was a missionary." Um, and so, yeah, we're gathering our alumni. Like we said, we're reminding them of all those things that they already know. Praying with them, hopefully, kind of uh, inspiring them to continue to live their faith vibrantly and to live mission. Um, we've we were able to. Uh, encourage over 600 uh, missionary alumni in particular to participate in SEEK. Uh, and that's with groups up to 10 people. So, you know, our missionary alumni are walking with or walked or walked with, you know, upwards of 6,000 individuals just through that conference alone. And some of that was obviously due to us re-encountering them, inviting them to come, 
uh, reminding them of this is a great tool uh, and resource to help evangelize those in your life, whether it be your family, your friends, maybe coworkers that you've met recently. Uh, so those are just some of the tastes of the fruits that we're seeing uh, from our alumni efforts. That's really awesome uh, to just, I'm sure that for somebody who's been involved in the past to come back, there's a uh, kind of a reconnection with a lot of friendships and a lot of people that they knew before, or even just the opportunity to reminisce and call to mind uh, what God has been doing and maybe even to rejuvenate that call that maybe yeah. they felt really, really firmly at one point, And then all of a sudden maybe they had kids and they're not getting as much sleep and it's easy for that. Uh, the zeal of mission to become, uh, let's just say crowded by many of the other things and uh, just kind of the challenges of life. I'm sure. Um, I, I mean, are you seeing people that uh, they're expressing some of the challenges that they're experiencing as they move on from kind of this dedicated time on mission. I mean, you and I have worked together for a long time. You've probably heard me say this. I would always tell staff that we're leaving, like, as a as a focused missionary, you were a full time Catholic. You're going to go and maybe become a full time mom or a full time engineer or a full time accountant, but you're still going to be Catholic all the time. And so, how do you live your faith, and how do you help? How do you help them within the alumni effort to overcome the particular challenges of, yeah, day to day life, and the, the just all those competing challenges that come with trying to live a faithful life? Yeah, those are certainly challenges. We hear a lot of feedback from our alumni um, as they transition, you know, post campus, and everything that life throws on you throws at you. Maybe it's maybe it's transitions in work. Maybe it's vocational transitions. Um, you know, everybody has their cross to carry. And so everybody's going through some sort of suffering. And so how do you continue to, to live faith uh, in the midst of that and not see faith as, as compartmentalized or something that you can do when you have time, but how do you live the faith no matter what is happening? Faith and life integrated, um, you know, seamlessly. And so one of the big ways we try to help our alumni um, think through that, pray through that, uh, understand that is really connecting them with people who have done it or connecting them with um, folks who Catholics, faithful Catholics who have lived more life. And so we try to bring in uh, lots of people that have different life experiences, but have lived their faith uh, through the midst of all those. And then can we share that wisdom uh, with our alumni and let that be an encouragement uh, to our alumni who are going through similar or maybe the same different challenges. And so I think that's one of the biggest ways we we serve our alumni is to connect them with those who have gone before them. I mean, that's that's like the beauty of the church, right? And the saints that we see in the past that we can connect and, uh, and, and know their stories and hear their stories and be inspired and live according to them. And so in, in similar ways, we're trying to do the same thing uh, for those who uh, are alumni now, but to connect them with kind of uh, others who have walked the same path that they are trying to walk now. That's the thing that really stands out from what you're talking about over the last couple of minutes is it's not just about trying to get them to do particular things for their faith, but also provide the opportunity for them to be connected to others who are trying to live that faith today. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot, but Focus uses a particular analogy. I'm sure all of our alumni will remember this, but can you just walk through the charcoal analogy? Why is that important for uh, us within mission, but especially to remind our alumni of that kind of that charcoal analogy? What's that all about? Sure thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it, on staff of Focus, we talk a lot about, you know, if you have charcoal um, that is close together, they're going to hold their heat and they're going to burn brightly. The moment you pull one one piece of charcoal away from the group and allow it to sit by itself, it goes out quite quickly. And so in the same way, the analogy is for, is for our faith, that when we're around others um, who are also burning for love of the Lord, you know, we can, we can sustain each other for a long time. But if we get isolated, um, it's really easy for that flame to die out. So that's one of the uh, biggest um, pieces of feedback we've had from our alumni is the community aspect. When they were missionaries or students, they had, you know, for the most part, really vibrant Newman centers. Maybe they were a missionary and they were on a team together where the whole team, four, maybe more missionaries, 
were committed to living the faith, committed to preaching the gospel, but also committed to sharpening each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, when our alumni kind of leave that environment, um, more likely than not, not always, but they find themselves in situations where that isn't as present, if not totally uh, not present at all, I should say. Um, and so the alumni team is hoping to be a little bit of that support system, a little bit of that hot charcoal that they can come back to, that they can be a part of, um, and that it can sustain them even in the difficulties of whatever environment they, they find themselves. So it's really important to be uh, living life with other faithful Catholics, men and women who desire to know, love, and serve the Lord. And so if that's difficult for some of our alumni to find after they leave staff or leave campus, uh, our hope is that the alumni team can be a little bit of that um, that gathering of coals for them. That's awesome. The uh, It makes me think when I, about 10 years ago, when my wife and I moved our family into a new parish, we were really thinking about, like, what can we do to try to maybe bring some of our experience or some different kind of energy into this parish? And I reached out to another Focus alumni and I, he had established a really successful men's outreach within his parish. And I called him and I said, hey, like, I want to do this. Like, what do you think is the like, what's the first thing that I should do? Expecting him to be like, you know, obviously pray or build a plan. He said, look, focus is really wise in the reality that when we go to a new mission field or even an established mission field, we send a team of people, right, two men and two women at least, who go together on mission. He said, the number one thing that you need to do is build a team of people that can mutually support and encourage one another to enter into that mission. Uh, because there's going to be days when you're going to be down you're going to need somebody else to kind of help carry the weight. And uh, if you don't have that, you're just not going to be sustained very long in the willingness to kind of make a difference in your parish, in your community, in your workplace, whatever it is, you got to find those other people that can help build you up. And so that, that charcoal analogy really held true for me. And yeah, there've been dark days where I'm like, I'm ready to change parishes. <laughs> and then I'd call some of my teammates and they'd be like, no, uh, you can't leave us. You promised you wouldn't go. So <laughs> it helps you just kind of stay effectively engaged in that. So I'm excited to hear that the alumni program uh, with the mobilization program for alumni within focus is helping to make those connections and to figure out who are those people that you can uh, strengthen and be strengthened by as well. So Tyler, how would somebody become involved with this effort that you guys have put together? Sure. Yeah. Uh, in particular, if you are alumni yourself, you can, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, at focus alumni. We, uh, advertise there, all the things we're doing, the ways you can get connected. Um, good way, whether you're alumni or not is go to focus alumni.org. And that's kind of a one-stop shop to understand all the things we might be doing. You can get in connected and involved in different ways there. You can also just email info at focus.org and we'd love to connect with you. Maybe give you a call, see how, uh, what, what the Lord's been putting on your heart and how you might be able to help. Awesome. Um, just curious if somebody has, was not involved with focus as a student or a staff member, is there anything that you have to offer to those people that are like, uh, I, I'm enamored by what Focus has done or the people I've known who are missionaries. Like, am I left out in the cold on this? Or is there some way, some way that that person could also get involved with the alumni mobilization effort? Sure. Yeah, obviously, yeah, we'd, we'd love to connect with you as well. Um, there's lots of different ways that non-alumni are, are a part of it. You know, we have actually lots of benefactors who generously open up their homes to host alumni gatherings and places where we can kind of bring those hot coals together which is a huge blessing. Um, you can go to focusalumni.org. We've got a job board there where, you know, faithful Catholic employers are looking for uh, hiring our alumni, uh, looking for good help. And they post their jobs there and our alumni can check that board out so you can go there. Um, there's plenty of different ways to be involved, even if you're even if you're not an alumni yourself. And in particular, the alumni team is, is funded through uh, generous support. And so if you're supporting focus uh, generally at all, we, I want to say thank you because that's how we are uh, able to serve our alumni too. So if that's something you're interested in financially supporting the organization, we benefit from that, uh, just like all the other departments in focus. So that's another way to get involved too. 
That's great. Um, let me put you on the spot. Let me invite you to make a big pitch to somebody who's listening to this, watching this, uh, for them to become involved with what you're doing. Why is it important for people to find this connection with the, the alumni mobilization program and what impact could you see it have in the midst of the world? Yeah, so I would say, you know, our alumni, both staff and students, in many ways are kind of the tip of the spear, I think, in the new evangelization. I would I would argue they're some of the most faithful, most zealous, most trained and most experienced Catholic evangelists. And our culture is only getting more hostile to the faith. And so we need to gather, uh, as we've been talking about the hot coals, we need to gather all the faithful and really... Um, and really, yeah, share the gospel, be a witness to light in this dark time. Um, you know, our, our, our generation is probably no different than, than previous ones. There's, there's difficulties in the faith no matter what time you live. But yeah, in the last five, 10 years in particular, we've seen a lot of hostility to the faith. And so I really believe that our alumni are part of that tip of the spear of the new evangelization. Um, but nobody's made to go it alone. We all need to lean on each other. And so whether you're an alumni or a supporter, like I just invite you to to be a part of this because I think we really can, uh, as the tip of that spear, help transform the culture for Christ and advance his kingdom. There's no time to waste. Tyler, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time to talk about the alumni mobilization effort within Focus. Really grateful to you as well as the rest of your team and what you're providing to our former students and staff who've been involved on campus or in other ways. I really uh, want to let you know that I'm praying for you and the efforts that you guys are making. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it.